Hello friends, this is Grief speaking. Today we're continuing our dive through the massive horror movie villain's iceberg. In tier 5, we're really starting to take a nosedive into obscurity. There's a few familiar faces, but there are a ton of villains here that were a first to me and were really interesting to look into. I don't want to take up too much time, so let's just get right to the villains. This is the horror movie villain's iceberg, tier 5. Starting with Harry Warden, My Bloody Valentine. Every year, the Canadian mining town of Valentine's Bluff holds a traditional Valentine's Day dance. One year, two supervisors at the mine left five miners unattended as they snuck off to enjoy the dance, and while they partied, the methane gas levels in the mine got out of hand, causing an explosion and the tunnel to cave in. Only one miner survived the attack, Harry Warden. In order to survive, Harry was forced to cannibalize his fellow workers, and he went completely insane. The following year, he killed the supervisors who abandoned him, cutting out their hearts and putting them in Valentine candy boxes with a note demanding that the town never hold the Valentine's Day dance again or there would be hell to pay. So Harry was locked up in an insane asylum. 20 years later, as the town plans to resume the Valentine's Day tradition, the killings begin again and the victim's hearts seem to have been ripped out. So the mayor calls off the dance once again, but some pissed off teenagers decide to have their own party out in the old mines. Harry isn't too pleased with this, so he dons the classic mining gear and goes on a gore-filled teen killing spree. The baby it's alive. Frank and Lenore are excited to have their second child, but the baby comes out deformed and murderous, killing everyone in the delivery room. From there, the city and Frank are trying to hunt the abomination down. It's kind of a wacky concept. You're trying to tell me this baby somehow has hyper intelligence with advanced motor skills and a level 100 sneak? Even if it is mutated, it just doesn't really make sense. But at this point, it's like a horror movie law or something. Anything that can be made into a horror villain will be, even a baby. Helena Marcus, Suspiria. Suspiria is an Italian horror film from 1977 about an American ballet dancer who goes to a dance academy in Germany. However, several bizarre deaths surrounding the school turn her study abroad into a nightmare. So some spoilers here, it turns out that the headmistress of the school, Helena Marcus, is essentially an undead witch. It's also worth noting that there was a 2018 remake of this film where Marcus looks even more terrifying, being a hideous mess. So a little backstory, Helena Marcus is also known as the Mother of Sorrow and is one of three ancient witches featured in the Three Mothers trilogy by director Dario Argento. Helena is the oldest and wisest of the three. She disguises her coven as a dance academy in order to lure in victims and feed off of their suffering. Alan Yates, Cannibal Holocaust. Alan Yates is a documentary filmmaker specializing in human atrocities. His next project is in the Amazon jungle focusing on a cannibalistic tribe. While Alan seems like just another victim in this movie, he's actually a ruthless psycho who often stages the violent events he films. Alan and his crew burn the tribe's people's village and one of their women. Later, they find the woman impaled on a wooden spike. While Alan makes it out as if the tribe did this to the woman, it's heavily implied that he did it himself in order to get more good footage. But don't worry, this dirtbag gets what's coming to him when the tribe finally has enough of his antics and eat him alive. Tristana Medeiros, Wreck. Wreck is a Spanish found footage horror film that follows Angela, a television reporter, and her cameraman Pablo, who are covering a routine night shift at a local fire station for a documentary. Their night takes a turn when they fall the firefighters to a building that is quickly quarantined by authorities, trapping the residents, Angela and Pablo, inside. From there, the situation only escalates and it becomes clear that a horrifying virus is turning residents into vicious zombie-like creatures, although it does seem the infection has supernatural and demonic origins. So let's talk about Tristana. She was originally a cook who worked at a convent, however one night she was sexually assaulted by a group of priests and afterwards was seemingly possessed by a demonic entity. A Vatican priest took Tristana and locked her away in an apartment penthouse House, where he experimented with her blood, leading to the infection scene in the movie. Angela later enters the penthouse and finds the records of the possessed girl as well as the priest's experiments. What Angela didn't realize is that Tristana is still lurking in the attic in the dark, and this leads to what I believe to be one of the most terrifying scenes in any horror movie, as Angela and her cameraman Pablo encounter a long-infected and grotesque Tristana who begins to hunt them down in the dark. I'm not trying to spoil the scare here, but I wanted to talk about it because this is not CGI, it's all practical effects, and thank god because I think this girl is one of the scariest things I've seen in found footage. Crawlers, The Descent. The film follows six adventurous women who travel to the Appalachian Mountains to go spelunking. However, shortly after they enter a mountain cave, it closes in behind them, trapping them underground. The claustrophobia alone makes this pretty scary in and of itself, but guess what? There's something else down there with them. Living underground for an untold amount of time are the crawlers, a humanoid species that have adapted to living in an underground environment. They seem to have enhanced speed and strength in the 
ability to easily climb walls, although they are blind and rely on echolocation in order to navigate. The Children, Village of the Damned. Originally a novel and then adapted into a 1960 film and later the 1995 John Carpenter remake, The Village of the Damned follows a group of strange children with deadly psychic powers. In a small English village, one day everyone suddenly passes out, suffering a strange mass blackout. Even weirder is it's discovered a few weeks later that many of the women suddenly became pregnant, including a virgin and a woman whose husband was away on business. Eventually, the women all give birth on the same day. As the children age, they look completely unlike their parents, having white blonde hair and gold eyes. They seem to share a hive mind and have no distinct personalities. They also possess psychic abilities and become a huge threat when they begin using these abilities to kill people. Billy227 Unfriended. Spoilers ahead on this one. Unfriended was a sort of found footage movie. It started the trend of movies where everything's seen through screens. Well, basically Blair and a group of her teenage friends are on Skype when suddenly Billy227 shows up and starts revealing several secrets amongst the friends and eventually some supernatural stuff happens leading to the friends dying one by one. Turns out the account Billy227 belongs to Laura Barnes, a teen who shot herself the previous year after Blair posted an embarrassing video online that resulted in Laura being bullied. Somehow her ghost is now using the account and getting revenge. The Banana Splits, The Banana Splits Movie. This is kind of an interesting one. The Banana Splits was originally an actual children's show in the late 60s that featured a band made up of Flegel, Bingo, Drooper, and Snorky. This movie features the same characters as animatronics and turns them into slasher villains. Basically, during a taping of a Banana Splits episode, a software update malfunctions and causes the lovable characters to go on a killing spree. The Ladomus Family, Ready or Not. The legacy of the Ladomus family began in the 19th century when merchant sailor Victor Ladomus played a game of chance with the demonic figure Mr. LaBelle. In this game, Victor won a mysterious black box from LaBelle as well as accruing vast amounts of wealth. The catch is that any new person to enter the Ladomus family by marriage must draw a card from the black box. On occasion, the initiate may draw the hide and seek card, and this is the main focus of Ready or Not, as Grace, the newest addition to the Ladomus family, draws the hide and seek card. If this card is drawn, the family is required to murder the new family member or else be cursed by Mr. LaBelle. So the Ladomus family begins to hunt down Grace in order to save their own skin, and it's clear they've done this several times in the past. Dr. Septimus Pretorius, Bride of Frankenstein. After the events of the first film, somehow Frankenstein and his monster survive. Dr. Septimus Pretorius, Frankenstein's mentor, hears about the monster and decides he wants to create a mate for him in order to breed an army of monsters and take over the world. Well, Frankenstein learned his lesson after the first movie and refuses. Pretorius then blackmails Frankenstein into helping him create the Bride of the Monster. While Frankenstein conducted his experiments out of scientific curiosity, Pretorius has bad intentions right from the get-go. Santa Claus, Santa's Sleigh. Santa's Sleigh is an insane movie from start to finish. Basically, Santa Claus, played by Goldberg of professional wrestling fame, goes on a killing spree through a town. The basic idea is that Santa Claus is actually the demon spawn of Satan, and originally Christmas was the day of slaying, where Santa would kill as many people as possible. However, in the year 1005, Santa lost a curling match to an angel and was forced to deliver presents on Christmas instead for 1,000 years. So now it's 2005 and Santa's ready to commence his day of slaying once again. It's crazy and over the top, but a lot of fun. Elias, good night, mommy. I'll keep this one brief to avoid spoilers, but essentially the movie follows twin boys, Elias and Lucas, who go to stay with their estranged mother. The mother's head is wrapped in bandages and she claims she has had cosmetic surgery. She's very strict with the boys and actively ignores Lucas. Well, the boys begin to suspect that this woman is not actually their mother and eventually tie her up and torture her to try and force her to admit that she's not their mom. Mr. Slauson, Tourist Trap. Slauson is the owner of what used to be a popular tourist spot and museum, Mr. Slauson's Lost Oasis. However, since a new highway was created, the museum has basically died out with the lack of passerby. When a group of college kids passes through with a flat tire, Mr. Slauson offers to help, but it's revealed that Mr. Slauson is actually a maniac with telekinetic powers. He uses his powers to control the various mannequins and figures in the museum, which assist him in his killing spree. He also wears a really creepy mask. The backstory is that Slauson's brother had an affair with his wife, and he went crazy and killed them both. He then seemingly adopted his brother's personality, split with his own. Kenny Hampson, Terror Train. I gotta say, this guy has a pretty unique villain origin story. Basically, Kenny is an awkward college kid who gets pranked by some fellow students. A beautiful girl lures Kenny into a bedroom, implying she's gonna have sex with them, but actually some frat dude secretly stole a woman's dead body from the medical school and placed it in bed with him, which completely traumatizes the dude, causing him to go to a psychiatric hospital. 
Although, I think the frat guy should go with them because what kind of a prank is that to actually use a corpse? Anyway, Kenny returns three years later to get revenge. The notable thing about this movie is that the murders happen during a costume party and Kenny is sporting a Groucho Marx costume, which is pretty interesting and definitely stands out as far as slasher killer getups. Calyx, Truth or Dare. This movie is about a group of people playing a supernatural game of Truth or Dare. If you don't play the game by either telling the truth or doing the dares, you die. Calyx is the demon who is conducting the game. Not much is known about him other than he was originally summoned by a nun who wanted revenge on a priest who forced the nuns to play a twisted game of Truth or Dare. Calyx made it worse, however, by continuing the game till all the other nuns were dead. In a strange ritual, the nun cut her tongue off and sealed him in a pot. In the modern day, the pot is broken and he's released once again to conduct the game. Elite Hunting, Hostel. Hostel follows a group of tourists who are backpacking across Europe. They decide to travel to a hostel in Slovakia that is supposedly filled with beautiful women. Well, it's true, they find their roommates to be gorgeous young women who take them out to party. Turns out, however, that this hostel is actually run by a criminal organization who kidnap tourists and provide them to high paying customers to be tortured and killed. This organization is called the Elite Hunting Club. Based on the long time rumors of underground snuff film societies, the Elite Hunting Club has secret torture chambers they rent out to clients along with any requested torture equipment and of course the victim. The only rule that the club has is that the torturers eventually actually kill their victims. Pretty brutal and what makes this group scary is that it seems like something that could actually be happening somewhere in the world. In fact, the idea came to director Eli Roth after he stumbled upon a Thai murder vacation website on the dark web whatever that means. Wolf School and Cannibals, Bone Tomahawk. Wolf School is the leader of a cannibal tribe in the late 1800s American West. The tribe essentially kill and eat men and then take their wives to breed more cannibals with. Because of the limited selection of women in this way, the tribe is mostly inbred as well. Lilith, Bordello of Blood. Bordello of Blood is actually a Tales from the Crypt movie and even has an introduction by the Crypt Keeper. Well, the film's antagonist is a vampire queen who's resurrected from her tomb. She runs a brothel of vampires where she lures men in in order to feed on them. The Voice, The Belko Experiment. This film follows the 80 employees of Belko Industries and Bogota, Colombia. The company requires its employees to have a tracker implanted into their skulls in order to prevent kidnappings. One day, as the staff show up to work at their building, they are locked inside and receive strange instructions over an intercom. The Voice instructs them to kill two people or there will be consequences. They ignore it, thinking it's some kind of joke, but soon four employees die when the trackers in their heads explode. The Voice can continues to demand the employees kill each other or be killed themselves, increasing the demand of bodies. Although the voice's identity remains unclear, eventually we do see the voice in physical form and it's revealed he is the head of an international organization that studies human behavior. Walter Paisley, A Bucket of Blood. Bucket of Blood was a horror comedy directed by King of Colt Roger Corman. It follows Walter Paisley, a busboy and wannabe sculptor. After accidentally killing his landlady's cat, he covers up the crime by encasing the dead cat in clay, making a sculpture out of it. He displays it at the Yellow Door Cafe and local artists are extremely impressed. He subsequently kills a cop and does the same, making a clay sculpture and literally titling it Murdered Man, which is once again praised by all. From there, he continues to kill in order to make his works of art. If you're into dark comedies, this one's pretty funny. I'd also recommend Roger Corman's other horror comedy, which was actually made on the same set, Little Shop of Horrors. I know the 80s remake is a big fan favorite, but the original is pretty funny in its own right and I think it gets overshadowed. Patriot, Cooties. Cooties was kind of an interesting take on a zombie movie. A zombie-like virus is spread through an elementary school's chicken nuggets, causing all the children to become infected over the course of the school day, leaving the teachers to fight them off. Patriot is one of two school bullies that relentlessly humiliate the other children prior to becoming infected. Blake Denton, Annabellum. This movie has such an insane concept, but basically Blake Denton is a US Senator and Civil War reenactor so obsessed with the Confederate Army that he basically role plays as a Confederate general and has created a full-on plantation where he kidnaps black people and forces them to be slaves. He gets particularly obsessed with minority rights activist Veronica Henley, who he treats as his own personal sex slave. Kurt Kunkel, Spree. Kurt Kunkel is a rideshare driver who's obsessed with social media fame and desperate to go viral. Out of his desperation, he devises a messed up plan to gain followers. He live streams himself committing a series of murders while working as a driver for an app called Spree. He rigs his car with cameras and begins a killing spree, broadcasting the carnage live on social media. His disturbing stream is initially mistaken for a dark joke, but soon garners attention as viewers realize what they're seeing is actually real. The film satirizes the modern obsession with social media, and in this regard, it's actually more like a dark comedy with some genuinely funny moments. Gertie the Clown, 100 Tears. This one is pretty 
obscure. 100 Tears is a low-budget killer clown movie. Essentially, Gertie the Clown, aka Luther Edward Baxter, is falsely accused of rape and beaten to a pulp. He then goes on a killing spree as an act of revenge. Like I said, this is an independent film, but despite the low budget, there's some pretty cool effects and kills. Johnny Stillman, I Spit on Your Grave. This is one of the most classic revenge movies and has one of the most iconic posters ever in my book. The film is fairly simple in plot. A woman is kidnapped and assaulted by a group of men who then leave her to die. This group is led by Johnny Stillman who convinces friends to do it. She survives the attack, however, and is now out for revenge, viciously killing the men off in graphic and disturbing ways. The most brutal probably being Johnny who gets his dork chopped off in a bathtub. Permutos, Permutos the Fallen Angel. This this is a wild ass German horror film. Basically, Permutos is supposedly the original fallen angel who was kicked out of heaven even before Lucifer and is a main source of war and tragedy throughout history. Basically, Permutos can bring the dead back to life and uses them to further chaos, death, and destruction. He reappears in the modern day and begins summoning hordes of zombies. The film's mostly notable due to its excessive blood and gore. In fact, the movie has a kill count of 139 and is often compared to Brain Dead as far as the amount of gore seen on screen. Michael Gibbons, Slashers. Slashers is a live Japanese game show where contestants are put into an arena with several masked killers for entertainment. The killers are free to commit any crime they wish on the show, and the only rule is that everyone must freeze during commercial breaks. It's a pretty interesting premise. Michael Gibbons is actually one of the contestants on the show, but it's later revealed that he himself is a serial killer known famously as the Bible Doll Killer. He actually joined the show to finally reveal to the world that he was the infamous killer, and all also to go out with a bang, fulfilling his dream of dying on live TV. Willard Stiles Willard Stiles is a social misfit who begins connecting more with rats than humans. After his domineering mother orders him to capture and drown the rats in their house, Willard feels pity and releases them. He then finds he has a strange control over them and eventually uses them for his own devious plans. Jack Ferriman, Ghost Ship Jack Ferriman is the main antagonist of the 2002 horror film Ghost Ship. In this film, Ferriman lures a crew of people to investigate the mysterious mysterious ship, the Antonia Graza, which disappeared in 1962. Once they arrive, horrible accidents begin happening, killing off most of the crew. It's then revealed that Ferryman is behind the deaths. Turns out, he's actually a soul collector who lures people to the ship in order to collect their souls for his masters in the afterlife. La Femme, Inside La Femme, or The Woman, is the mysterious intruder in the French film Inside. After a terrible car crash, soon-to-be mother Sarah finds out that she's the only survivor and that her husband died in the crash. Crash. While waiting for her mother to come and stay with her, a woman shows up and begins trying to get into the house and attack Sarah, but eventually leaves. What's creepy is, Sarah develops some photos she took outside that day and she can see the woman standing in the background, meaning she's been stalking her for a while. Sarah has a police car stay outside of her house in case the woman returns, and she does, unbeknownst to the cops. From here, she continues to pursue Sarah with frightening viciousness, even killing Sarah's cat when it bugs her. So, spoilers after this point, it turns out that the woman was actually a passenger in the other car in the crash that we saw at the beginning of the movie, and she was also pregnant, but lost her child due to the accident. Now she's after Sarah to try and kill her and remove her child to keep as her own. This all culminates in a truly frightening conclusion, and she even gets a decent body count, killing pretty much every character in the movie. Benny. Benny loves you. Benny is a stuffed red dog that comes to life and murders people. He was originally the stuffed animal of Jack as a boy, but now Jack's an adult and in debt. He's forced to sell his house and as a result throw away many of his old things, including Benny. This is when Benny comes to life, attempting to kill anyone that gets in the way of his and Jack's friendship. Adrian be my cat. A Romanian filmmaker named Adrian is obsessed with the actress Anne Hathaway. Adrian decides to create a film to convince Hathaway to come to Romania and star in his movie. To do this, he plans to make a low-budget horror film with local actresses, demonstrating how he would direct Hathaway in his dream project. The film documents Adrian's interactions with the actress he hires as he guides them through various scenes. However, it quickly becomes apparent that Adrian's intentions are far more sinister than they seem. His obsession with Hathaway and his delusions about his filmmaking project lead him down a path of disturbing and violent behavior. As the project continues, the actresses find themselves in increasingly dangerous situations. Adrian's behavior becomes more and more erratic and alarming, making him a great villain. Also, it's pretty ballsy to use the name of a real-life actress like that, and the acting is great, with Andre really seeming like a true delusional psychopath. Peter Mountain, August Underground The August Underground series is considered one of the most depraved found footage franchises ever made, and Peter Mountain is one of the most 
most evil villains on this iceberg. There's really not much of an origin, story, or any character development in these movies, but I guess I'll just list some of the demented acts that Peter Mountain has committed. He kidnapped a woman, smearing fecal matter all over her, killing her boyfriend in front of her, and feeding her one of his toes. He then cuts off a man's leg with a hacksaw in front of his twin brother, and cuts the fetus out of a pregnant woman. This is on top of dozens of random murders, including children. Okay guys, we're nearing the end of the iceberg. There are only two tiers left, and they're pretty small compared to the others, so I'll likely combine them into one video. Thanks for hanging in there. I know my uploads have been a little less frequent, but I'm working on some really cool projects that I hope you guys will like. Special thanks to my patrons, Naomi Romero, Soma, Krusty the Crab, One Group, Laz Wishgender, Hunter Piva, Heather M, Creepy Pasta Cube, A Slightly Bigger Ant, Ricky Shadow, Strong Kohi, Matt Rozak, Steamboat Millie, The Beast Llama, Holy Ears, Nat007, Andrew Valencia, Ursa, and Michelle Bracey. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you want a shout out like that, as well as bonus content, consider becoming a patron. The link is below. But I appreciate you guys watching at all, so thank you. This is Grief Speaking. Goodbye, friends. Henry.